her life story, whatever you want to share. And I asked her to be real bold. So we'll see what happens. All right, but she's got some time here to share what, what's on her heart. So we'll, we'll leave it with her. Go ahead. You're going to watch yourself. I'm going to watch myself right there. All right. And if you use this too much, it'll shake the table. I will. I'll try not to. <laughs> um, we shared what uh, our story was probably at the end of lunch. So we kind of left it at that. Um, and I'm just going to go through bullet points. I have it all written out so that I don't forget to say something that I meant to say. Um, and I've shared my story several times but never with you. So at the risk of being known as the girl with cancer, I am sharing with you all uh, the basis of courage and walking in untroubled trust. So if I could ever give a theme of my life or how I walk, it is in untroubled trust. Uh, it began in 2007 with severe back pain, literally putting me in bed uh, for long periods of time. Returning from physical therapy session in 2008, I was paralyzed uh, from my waist down with a tumorous cancer in my T10 area. I have no T10, it's not there. There are pins and rods from T7 to T12 and that is what holds my spine together. The x-ray is quite impressive. <laughs> I left it at home, but it is quite impressive. I don't send off any alarms or anything because it's made out of titanium. Um, but this began the journey that is now our life. Given a less than 1% chance of ever walking again from a man we call Dr. Dark, that's not his name, but that is what we called him. <laughs> um, we said, and I say we, because this is Ron's journey too. He walks this just like I do, except he won't be in chemo tomorrow like I will. Um, We said, let's just see what God gives back. And God decided in his sovereignty that I would be, I would walk. And I would be able to share his grace and mercy. But it is not me. It is his decision. And I, I, I say in the, that verse of in Christ alone, there is no guilt in life and no fear in death. Because as cancer patients, we can have guilt in that God decided for me to walk in, not you. And I, I can't make reason for that. It is simply God's sovereignty, and I rest in that peace. And I have taken on guilt for that before, but I will not. Because that wasn't my decision. Um, as 1 Timothy 1.12 says, he considered me faithful, putting me into service. So I, I don't take the ability to walk knowing lightly, because I know it was God's will and sovereignty that had on me. So after uh, radiation chemo, losing my hair twice, so if you have hair, it's a good hair day. <laughs> Just take that home, okay? Lots, lots, lots of physical therapy. Lots of walking with a walker and Ron, taking the walker and going, you can make it this far, thinking that was funny. Uh, but mostly encouragement and love for my family, I learned how to walk again and trust that God had all of this in his sovereign plan for me. I have had two stem cell transplants. Those are my stem cells. Sometimes I forget people don't know that, but they're mine. Um, there is no success in embryonic stem cell. There's, there's never been a success in that, ever. It only creates tumors. Um, <clears throat> One in 2008, one in 2015. 2008 enabled me not to have any treatment whatsoever for six years until 2015 because we knew the cancer that I have is called multiple myeloma. It is incurable, but it is treatable. So we know if it kind of lays ill for a while, it, it, it's not really dormant. It will come back. So in 2015, I've had treatment and chemo since then. None that make me lose my hair, because that's what Brian said, you have chemo, but you have your hair. <laughs> that's my first question when we change chemo, does it make me lose my hair? <laughs> I've done that twice, that's not for anybody. So that's, that's not a good one. So um, I have, uh, all right, I told you that, okay. But in us being told that this is a cancer that's incurable, but treatable, 
You have to compartmentalize that to go, what, what, what does that mean? Well, diabetes is incurable, but it is treatable. Crohn's is incurable, but it is treatable. So that's how we kind of put that into a category to live with. Because if you have to live with cancer, cancer is the big C word, nobody talks about that, you're going to die. If we had believed WebMD, I would have been dead about 2010, something like that. So that's, we don't go to, never go to WebMD. <laughs> Take that to your bed, too. Don't, don't ever do that. It's never updated. It is information that is never updated. So don't, I just, again, take that. So I will be on chemo until there is a cure or God takes me home. Uh, this life of masks, hand sanitizer, Clorox wipes, staying home from crowds is something we've lived with for 13 years. That's a lot longer than March. Um, when we came home from stem cell transplant, three months of no crowds. Wear a mask to the doctor, go home, that's it. That's what we have to do. Um, Ron would take me to a movie theater, and they get popcorn and the Coke, and then take a Clorox wipe and wipe the whole chair down and the arms and everything like that. I had a mask on and a wig, and if someone walked by, I'd hide behind Ron, because that's protection for me. And we did that twice. So, um, he teases, he says, I watch people at Wendy's make my burger, and if they touch it without a glove, the thing, or just wipe their nose, I have them make it again. Which is true. I do that. Um, I have always given back the menu and hand sanitized my hands and Ron's hands. That's just, that's our way of life. It always has been since 08. So, um, it doesn't mean that I take COVID any less seriously. Please hear me on that. I don't. I don't take unnecessary risks, but you do see us not wearing a mask. Um, that's just our conviction. That's not something we put on you. You've seen me up in choir and praise team and mini choir and in here. And that's, that's just the way we walk. That's our conviction. Please, please hear me. We're not judging anyone or putting that conviction on anyone else. Okay. Um, in Second Chronicles 2012, Jehoshaphat is in a battle that he cannot win. But he stands there and he looks and he says, Lord, we don't know what to do. But our eyes are on you. Further down in the chapter, God says, you see this fight. The battle's not yours. It's mine. Watch me fight for you. And he wipes out all their enemies. They kill each other. And they did nothing, but it took them three days to take the spoil back to the camp. That was one of the verses I really clung to in transplant. Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. I'm, I'm not allowed to go home until my platelets are a certain number because literally a cold could kill me because they take your marrow to nothing, nothing, zero. And then they give your stem cells back to you in hope that everything starts ticking back up again and your marrow makes good blood cells. As I have been studying Acts chapter 9, verse 31 stood out to me. Because I am a precept Bible teacher and have been for over 20 years, we're studying, coincidentally, Acts. So we're in chapter 9, and chapter 9, verse 31 says that the people, the church, this is the beginning of the church, but they said, uh, well, in Jerusalem, the church was being persecuted in fear of death. But 31 said it, it enjoyed peace. It was being built up and going on in the fear of the Lord, but in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. The church continued to increase. As our friends, family, and neighbors observe our behavior, I want them to see courage, not recklessness, or not reckless. But more than that, no fear. No, I will come out of my house, I will walk, um, I will share Jesus with you anytime that I can. Um, because I know sovereign God has me in the palm of his hand, and no man can take me out, and I will not fear what man can do to me. I want to say with Paul, I finished the course, I have kept the faith, so that the Lord will say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant. We have a neighbor whose mom is dying of kind of cancer. Pancreatic. Is it pancreatic? 
And and again, he looks at me with cancer, um, encouraging her and encouraging him, but trying to share Jesus within that conversation because they don't know Jesus. That's where the lack of fear comes from. Um, if I die of COVID, I will have always been going to die of COVID because sovereign God decides how many days I have and how many I don't. Um, Ryan calls that courage. I just call it untroubled trust in who my God is and how much I trust him with everything literally uh, that we walk in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lapel has a. Doesn't comment. Yes. Your hair looks amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Lapel. <laughs> you said your head looks amazing. My hair. My hair. Hair, yeah. Brian. Hair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can't see your head. Your That's right. right. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing that. When we heard that, we heard kind of an excerpt of that. That's two weeks. Is that where we were? Two, 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 two J's. Two J's. Two J's. Two J's. But um, you don't need this, right? Sorry for those of you on the TV. So um, I thought we needed to hear her, her story, Ron's story. Um, I'm like a little kid when I hear stories like this. I just want to ask a lot of questions. We're an open book, so if you ever... So does we're, anybody we're have fine. a question we're or fine. a comment? Like, what was it like or whatever? Anybody got one? Joanne. Yeah, just to clarify, did you say that you are back on chemo right now? I will be on chemo forever and always um, until they find a cure. I see. Yeah, so at Mondays I'm on for three Mondays on, one Monday off. Three Mondays on, one Monday for this treatment until this one stops working. And then they'll put me on something else. But doesn't make me lose my hair. <laughs> so every Monday morning, if you think of Jenny, mm. pray for her. Mm that the chemo will, the chemo will take. Okay, yes, Sam. May I ask a question? Absolutely. <laughs> How does the chemo make you sick, make you very ill, or make you sick? Uh, and again, I, and, um, you are your best advocate. This one, for some reason, made me throw up within about three or four hours of getting home. So again, I, I'm the complainer. I'm like, I'm allergic to nausea and pain. So you have to take care of those two things. And they did. They found something that stopped that. That's Otherwise, stopped. we'd have had to find another yeah, medicine. That's pretty miserable. That's pretty miserable. pretty miserable. So they could stop that. They did. They with found the, the right combo. Thank yes. You. So did you have that experience with your other chemo? No. Uh, except stem cell transplant. Yes. Okay. Again, God was merciful there. I should have had mouth sores. I should have been, but I had nothing. Uh -huh. Nothing except my hair loss and fatigue. Huge fatigue. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. Did I, hear, did I see any other questions or comments? I'm looking at the screen. Okay. Hope you guys heard that. Luck now. Go ahead. Yeah, how did they go about doing the stem cell transplant? How did they go about doing That's stem cell transplant? That's not fun. <laughs> they literally, for uh, three to five days, however many days it takes to get your stem cells in 08, um, the blood bank actually does it, and they uh, had to have a trifusion catheter. We, these are words, nobody ever wants to know what they are, but this is what they are. So that they could put uh, blood, take my blood out, give me my blood back, and then give any medication that they need to. Um, spin it through. And the, uh, that's right, centrifugal. They spin it through and get my stem cells out and give me my blood back. And it took three days of every day. Uh, that takes about seven to nine hours oh. each day. Wow. Yeah, that was not fun. Uh, but in 15, they didn't have to do that because I had enough stem cells. Uh, from the first Still time. from the first time, but they just freeze them. Okay. okay. Yeah. Was it all? I'm sorry, Liz has a question. Um, so you mentioned you didn't have any bone marrow at all? I don't, and I thought I didn't have any bone marrow. They bring my bone marrow to zero so that it will start producing good blood cells because myeloma is in the leukemia lymphoma. Myeloma is, it's, it's a blood cancer. So my blood was producing cancer instead of good, uh, you know, not totally, but 
So do they check your levels when you go um, to the doctor? Regularly? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Every Monday I get blood work. Every I don't know, three months or so they do a myeloma panel. Yeah. Something like that. The stem cell transplant. She has to be in the hospital for 21 days, and then when she came home, she couldn't go out for three months, and close to a year before she could go out and work in the garden because there's so many bacteria in the dirt. Oh my! So. Yeah, Wow. So Did all of this happen here in Florida? In Florida Hospital. So you, so you lived that is the only place uh, in Orlando that does stem cell transplant is Florida Hospital. There's another one in Gainesville, Gainesville Miami. Okay. Gainesville. Just Gainesville. Okay. It's Shands. All right. So at least you got to stay here. Yeah, which was a huge to... blessing. Yeah. Huge blessing. Because wow. he was there like every night. Well, I think about um, like just what Jeannie and I go through and it's Nothing. <laughs> it's interesting, as a side note, um, back in 2008, streaming was not anything. That's true. She wanted to see church because she was, you know, at <clears throat> First Baptist Windermere, we were, I was running sound all the time and she was in the choir, she was on the praise team, so she wanted to see the church. So I took a little camera on my webcam, yeah. just like that, and people would come up to the camera and say hi to her and stuff. <laughs> it was the first streaming that we know of at that church. <laughs> Might have been in Orlando. But that's <laughs> and now look what it's done. You know. yeah. And let me say something, suffering. Never compare to suffering. Never. Suffering is suffering. Suffering is suffering. suffering, is suffering. Mm -hmm. Mine's different than, any, than yours, but, but suffering, everybody suffers. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to give credence to that because God gets you right in little different places. I'm so. thinking of the very first time you heard you had cancer. Do you recall the yeah, reactions? I, I do, because especially because he said it was incurable. Uh -huh. And my son was nine at the time. And we were in the throes uh -huh. of homeschooling. But did, so. they say, did they say it was fatal? No. no. Just not curable. Not not curable. curable. So that's again what we had to do with what you do with that. But in 2008, life expectancy was only five years. Uh, so in that alone, you're a miracle. It is. It, it, it's just, I, I can only say God's sovereignty and the privilege of going to church um, when that's taken away from you. You hold that very close to your heart so that when you're allowed, Boy, you want to be there when that door opens. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, turn to John.